Today we are on the fifth uh, of our 10 part series and today we'll be slowing down and ordering your life. I'm actually looking forward to this one and because this is this is an area that is just so important for all of us and for me and in preparing for tonight I've been just doing so much thinking uh, just about myself and how my own life is and 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 what's happening and how I'm living it out so so uh, I hope this is beneficial for all of us. Father Thomas Hopko once said at a retreat that I attended, if you are too busy to pray, you are too busy. Our lives can be too busy. There's so many different demands. Modern life is a too busy life. We are all driven to work faster and faster and more and more efficiently. Our kids are involved in multiple activities, demanding schedules. With demands of work and family, there's little time left for reflection and prayer. As a result, we can become insensitive to the needs of others and, and feel the burden of stress and anxiety. Such a fast-paced life makes us feel tense, inefficient, insecure and even superficial. And then we have the double irony of technology. Technology that we're using right now, we are all, we're all sitting on our computers right now using this technology. Now, originally, originally, Technology, the, uh, the various things we have are invented to save us time. And so, but what's happened is we use that time that we've saved to do more and more things. And so our lives are more fast paced and more hectic than ever. And, and it's interesting that it's, it's, as I mentioned, a double irony because at first, Technology was meant to save us time, but now it seems that technology is not even interested in saving us time, but in taking up our time. Its focus oftentimes is how long can we get people to use this technology, to stay on the technology. Television wants us to stay on as long as, as, long as it can get us to. The internet and smartphones, uh, the whole psychology between behind notifications and hearing a little beep and all sorts of things like that are meant to keep us on our screens. And then with the coronavirus, the amount of time in front of our screens has risen. So for many people, the last thing they do before they go to bed and when they get up is not prayer, but it's checking their email or the news on their smartphone. Over the years, our time on our computers, on our phones, and on television, maybe television has gone down a little bit, but everything else has gone up dramatically. And while technology has been a big part of our inability to live a calm and peaceful life, it's certainly not the only culprit. There's been a struggle that humans have had way before the internet. We constantly search for distractions. To deal with this, we need to be very intentional. The pace of our life and the way we look at our life needs to be altered. In the spiritual life, we call this repentance. To redirect our hearts to what is right. But in this case, in our life, uh, in the ordering of our life, we need a life ordering repentance, uh, a, a redirecting 
of our priorities and daily activities to what is healthy for us, our minds, our souls, and our bodies. When our spiritual fathers ask us to slow down, they're not asking us to give up achieving important things. They are asking us to focus on what is really important and to approach them with a positive, focused, and reflective attitude with God's will in mind. It's only in this way that we are able to do his will. When our lives are in the fast lane, our minds are also in the fast lane, and we find our thoughts racing through our minds so fast that we can't even complete them. We're not able to discern which thoughts have quality and which things we should focus on to do really well. When we slow our lives down, we will, when we slow our lives down, we will slow our minds as well. We'll be able to focus on our tasks with quality and discern how to live according to the gospel virtues. And as we slow down, we become more capable of discerning what's important and to reflect on the best way to do these tasks. We can then choose to do what is important in a moderate pace, one that is not harried or stressful. So it's not about not doing things that we should do. It's about examining the things that we do do and looking at what is taking up time that is not helpful for us. This is one of the things. If we even look at television, for instance, and think about how much time that takes in our life, or looking at our phones, or looking at the news, or getting involved in, in knowing everything that's going on in the political world. And that's been a major source of entertainment a very dark entertainment for the country over the past um, election and ongoing, really. So what I'd like to focus on tonight is a slower paced life and offering some suggestions. Slowing down is a conscious decision. It can be difficult, but I believe it does lead to a greater level of happiness, more joy in life. So I'm going to offer 12 uh, thoughts here. Um, each one of these thoughts, each one of these ideas, we could have a whole night to talk on it, but I'm on, only gonna talk on each one of the 12 for a, a couple minutes each. Uh, so, so this is just some ideas. And, to, and to, for me to think that even for myself, we can take all 12 of these ideas, and I, I have 12 here. You could probably pick 100 different things, but here's 12 things I think that are important and helpful, and it's a smaller number than 50. Um, but even if we can take a couple of these ideas out of the 12 and try to focus on them, and maybe after a while we can add another one, I think that would be helpful. So it's not a all or nothing type of thing. Let's do what we can do. So let me start with the first thing. And the first thing is do less. It's hard to slow down when you're trying to do a million things. Instead, make the conscious choice to do less. Focus on what's really important what really needs to be done, and let go of the rest. Put space between tasks and appointments so you can move through your days at a more leisurely pace. Sometimes we have, um, and, and we're all in different situations, and we all have uh, different daily activities that we're involved in. Um, and for some of us, we're making appointments one right after the other, or putting on our schedule one thing, then the next thing, then the next thing. And if we can spread things out a little bit, we might actually do less in one particular day 
but we might be able to do it with do the one thing or the fewer things more focused and do a better job on those things and in the long run we may be doing more by by doing less if we can put space a little space between the activities we do that can be very helpful that's number one do less number two go to bed earlier and wake up earlier we all need sleep and most of us are not getting enough of it we all need prayer and most of us are not getting enough of that either the purpose of a rule of prayer is not to satisfy god's desire to hear our petitions but to help us to be more centered and more focused on the life he calls us to it keeps us healthy by getting up a bit earlier we will have time for morning prayer by going to bed earlier we will be kind to ourselves get the sleep we need be able to give thanks to god before we go to sleep and be able to get up a bit earlier in the morning for prayer i fall in this as much as anybody else and sometimes it's been a difficult day or a long day and you want to veg out in front of a, a movie uh, that ends up going really late uh, and then i notice what happens is it's harder to get up in the morning and then my evening prayer is suffers and my morning prayer suffers and then once we just start getting rid of those things and not doing those things uh, we're only harming ourselves in the end at the end of our life if we didn't see a few movies or didn't stay up quite as late would it have been is that such a horrible thing if we actually got to bed earlier got more rest and had morning and evening prayer because we took care of ourselves how much better would the quality of all our life be not just our our sleep so that's number two. Number three, be present. It's not enough to just slow down. You need to actually be mindful of whatever you are doing at the moment. That means when you find yourself thinking about something you need to do or something that, that's already happened or something that might happen, gently bring yourself back to the present moment focus on what's going on right now focus on the people that are around you right now if you're having a conversation with someone focus on that person that you're with at that moment if you're driving the car focus on your driving the car at that moment on your actions, on your environment, on others around you, focus on what's going on at the moment. This actually takes practice because our minds want to go to the past, it wants to go into the future, but it's essential that we intentionally look at being present. Number four disconnect don't always be connected we don't always have to be updated we don't have to check our email as often as we do we don't need to get a news update every hour i would suggest we actually turn off the notifications on our phones i actually did this uh, especially for email and news updates you know, I, I had downloaded a, uh, a, a news app on my phone. One of the problems with news apps is they look at the type of news you read, and then they only give you those type of, that type of news. So you're only getting one dimension of what's really going on. And then they, they'll, if, there, if there's a new article or new news thing, my phone beeps. 
there's like some new article just came out. Oh, trying to get my attention to, and I decided I don't need to know that. I actually deleted all the news apps from my phone. If I want the news, I'll, I'll go to the news instead of having them send me the news. So, and Facebook will try to get your attention throughout the day. Stop the notifications on Facebook. I actually took Facebook off my phone. I need it for the church. And so when I want to go on Facebook, I'll use my computer when I'm sitting at the desk and I'll do it. But it's not helpful for me if I have my phone and Facebook is always dinging me, telling me someone liked something or someone wants to be a friend or all of that stuff. So the only really notifications I get on my phone is a text message or if my phone rings because someone's calling me. Everything else I have to decide to go and I try not to go as often as I used to. We should, we should know how to silence our gadgets, our phones, our, our tablets. We need to silence them in church and during prayer time. Uh, being connected all the time means that we're subject to interruptions. We're constantly stressed about information coming in, and we are at the mercy of the demands of others. And a lot of times, the demands of others are just methods of making money off of us. Uh, so we don't have to be enslaved to that. We can decide to turn things off. And, uh, and we need to do that. Number five, focus on people. Too often we spend time with friends and family or meet with our colleagues, and we're not really there with them. We talk to them, but we are distracted. We're there, but our minds are on other things we need to do. We're listening, but we're really thinking about ourselves and what we want to say next. None of us are immune to this, but with conscious effort, we can shut off the outside world and just be present with the person you're with. This means that just a little time spent with your family and friends can go a long way, a much more effective use of your time. It means we really connect with people rather than just meeting with them, just being in the same vicinity with them. Uh, parents and children, we need to be present and focus on our kids. Uh, when we're with people at church, when we're with people at work, people will recognize if you're being present with them or if you're just in the same room with them, but thinking about other things. Number six, appreciate nature. Many of us are shut in our homes and offices and cars most of the time, and rarely do we get the chance to go outside. And often, even when people are outside, we see people talking on their cell phones. Instead, take the time to go outside and really observe nature. Take a deep breath of fresh air. Enjoy the serenity of water and greenery. Say the Jesus prayer while you walk. Synchronize your prayer, the Jesus prayer, with your breathing and with each step that you take. Find a comfortable praying rhythm. Exercise outdoors when you can, or find other outdoor activities to enjoy, such as nature walks, hiking, swimming, things like that. Even with COVID now and the difficulties that that's been, thank God one of the blessings that we have is to participate in outdoor activities. This is, an, this is a time where we can actually spend more time, a little bit more time outdoors and appreciate the world around us. Feel the sensations of water and wind and earth against your skin. 
Try to do this daily. Every day we should spend, you know, the last few days, the, the temperature has dropped and it's been really nice to go outside and take a walk, maybe even put a sweatshirt on or a sweater on or something like that and just go outside and, and not be so cooped up. And, and when we do this, perhaps with a loved one too, um, and you don't even have to talk. You can just be together and be outside, be present with each other uh, and appreciate each other and appreciate nature. Very important. Number seven, eat slower. When we're in a hurry, we tend to speak out angrily instead of lovingly when we are interrupted or distracted. It's not possible to love with a mind that is racing at high speed. We need to check ourselves when we're rushing through activities like making a meal or eating. Instead of cramming food down our throats as quickly as possible, which leads to overeating and a lack of enjoyment of the food, learn to eat slowly. Be mindful of each bite. Appreciate the flavors and the textures. Eating slowly has the double benefit of making you fuller on less food and making the food taste better. A lot of times our body doesn't feel the fullness of the food we eat until some time after we eat it which means we can be eating things. And if we're eating kind of quickly, we're still feeling the hunger. We haven't gotten to that fullness feeling, even if perhaps we've eaten enough. Uh, if we eat slower, then we will feel full at a more appropriate time and then probably stop eating sooner and, and not be as hungry. And then you taste things more. We talked about a moment ago in being a present with the people around us. This is kind of like that too. Being present with the food that you're eating. So you can enjoy it and taste it and experience it. God created all these things and it's so beautiful. All the blessings and, and things we enjoy in life. And we should enjoy it. I suggest also learning to eat more real food as well, uh, healthier food uh, with some great spices instead of fat and salt and sugar and frying for flavor. And uh, our Ethiopian uh, brothers and sisters certainly know how to use the spices to help, uh, help the food. Have, uh, have that wonderful taste. So eat slower, number seven. Number eight, drive slower. Speedy driving is a pretty prevalent habit in our fast-paced world, but it's also responsible for a lot of traffic accidents, a lot of stress, and wasted fuel. Instead, make it a habit to slow down when you drive. I don't mean being the real slow person uh, that everybody's honking the horn at. I mean, just following the speed limit. Following the speed limit, and I'm not saying this from a law enforcement angle, it's really difficult. I mean, it's difficult for me. And, and, but... But learn how to do that. Make it a habit when you drive. Appreciate your surroundings. Make it peaceful, a peaceful time to contemplate your life and the things you're passing. Driving will be more enjoyable and much safer. You'll use less fuel too. And this connected with the first thing I mentioned, do less and also the eating, eating slower, to drive slower and to eat slower means 
that we might have to leave the house earlier to go someplace because we're going to be driving a little slower. Okay, give yourself more time to get to the place. And since we're eating slower, give yourself a little bit more time to prepare the meal uh, so you're not rushing in the cooking and rushing in the eating. And that's back to the first thing, do less. You know, if we're doing a few less things, then we'll be able to enjoy the preparing of the food a little bit more. We'll be able to leave the house if we're going someplace a little bit earlier. I mean, we can get to church uh, on time instead of getting to church 15 minutes later. And so, but to do this, we have to slow down what we're doing, do a little bit less so we can do everything we need to do. That's number eight. Number nine, find pleasure in anything. And this is also related to being present, but it's taking it a step farther. Whatever you're doing, be fully present and also appreciate every aspect of it and find the enjoyable aspects. I, I can't help but think of uh, St. Porfirios and St. Paisios talking about their time on the holy mountain and, and doing whatever chores that they had to do. And they just talk about how they enjoyed every chore that they had to do. Even if it was something out of obedience and it wasn't something that they even understood why they were doing it. But whatever they were doing, they were present in the thing that they were doing and they enjoyed it. Instead of complaining about the things that we have to do anyway, why complain about it? Why choose to look at it in a negative way? For example, when washing dishes, instead of rushing through it as a boring chore to be finished quickly, really feel the sensations of the water, the suds, the dishes. This might sound strange, but it can be actually an enjoyable task if you learn to see it that way. The same applies to other chores, washing the car, mowing the lawn, sweeping, dusting, laundry, and anything you do, actually. Life can be so much more enjoyable if you learn this simple habit, to find pleasure in anything. Number 10, single tasking. Now we've all heard about multitasking and we even uh, feel pretty good if we're really good at multitasking. We can do a lot of things at the same time. And we look at those poor schleps that, that can't seem to do more than one thing at a time. But I'd like to ask you to think about it in a little different way. The opposite of multitasking is single tasking. Focus on one thing at a time. When you feel the urge to switch to other tasks, pause, breathe, and pull yourself back. You know, on the computer, we have, uh, we have on, on my computer, which is a, a Windows-based computer, I can have several windows open at the same time. And I find myself doing that too, you know, I'll have, I'll be working on this and I'll switch over to this and I switch over to that. I have all these, I actually have two monitors on right now. So I can look at you and look at our slides going at the same time. But when we try to do too many things at the same time, we might think we're actually doing more things, but uh, according to what some smart people say, uh, when we are multitasking, our brain can actually function less on the things that we're doing. Uh, and, and, uh, and when we're doing one thing at, at a time, we can give more energy and more focus 
and, and do it better on that one thing. And so then we can get to the other things one at a time rather than trying to do everything at, at the same time. Uh, Steve Jobs said, people think uh, focus means saying yes to the thing you've got to focus on. But that's not what it means at all. It means saying no to the hundred other good ideas that are there. You have to pick carefully. So focus, try to do this. Try to do some single tasking. For some of us, it's difficult to do multitasking anyway. But, but if, if you're prone to doing that multitasking, and then it comes comes that way with our relationships with people. You know, if we're multitasking all the time and we're so good at it, and we, when we're talking with someone, we're trying to do other things at the same time, and it's hard to be present with that person. So single tasking, try it. Number 11, breathe. When you find yourself speeding up, and stressing out, pause and take a deep breath. Take a couple more. Feel the air coming into your body. And when you exhale, feel the stress going out. By fully focusing on each breath, you bring yourself back to the present and slow yourself down. It's no accident that the Jesus prayer is connected to our breath. We can always uh, think of that. Uh, and, and as we take a, deep, uh, take a deep breath, especially during that times where we're finding ourselves stressed and our minds are racing and we, wanna, and we should take a deep breath, we can just breathe in. Lord Jesus Christ, and breathe out, have mercy on me. Number 12. In the evening, make time for spiritual reading, reading the gospel, the Psalms, and other spiritual works. Especially when we find ourselves during these Lenten periods, these fasting periods like we're in now before Christmas. This is a gift the church gives us to kind of give, an, give us an excuse to say, no, I'm not going to go do this now. I'm not going to go, you know, watch that movie now. I'm going to do some spiritual reading. It's an aspect of the slowing down. Then at a time that you've designated for prayer, go to your special place and carry out your prayer rule. As part of your prayer rule, briefly review the activities of the day. Give thanks to what went well. Ask forgiveness for what didn't go as you desired. Remember that God is a loving God and he will comfort you. He will give you strength for what is to come tomorrow no matter how difficult it might seem. This is helpful when we're so busy. And I know this as well as you all know this. I don't live in the monastery. I live at home. You all live at home. It's so easy to have so many things going on in our life that we just push out our morning prayer routine and our evening prayer routine, uh, a spiritual reading. Sometimes it's because of other entertainments. Sometimes it's just because we're trying to pack so many things into the day. And what I'm trying to encourage us to see is that this is important. To slow down doesn't mean uh, you're weaker, or you can't do what other people do. It actually means you're living life better, and you're doing the important things. And the important things that you're doing, you can do them better instead of just giving it 
a uh, just kind of showing up for it, but not having the energy to accomplish things. And so, so these are 12 items I thought that all of us could think about and apply. If we can't apply all 12 tomorrow, then maybe we can think of a few of them or a couple of them and really start thinking about it and really start trying to apply it. I thought um, that well, one of the things I, I noticed speaking about slowing down and packing so much into the time we have last week, we talked about the Jesus prayer and I felt afterwards that so much information was packed into that hour that we had talking about the Jesus prayer. It almost didn't feel all that prayerful for me. Um, and, and I thought we could take a few moments tonight uh, to, uh, if last week on the Jesus prayer was kind of theoretical, Maybe we could take a few moments, uh, a few moments tonight and do a practical, uh, but practice the Jesus prayer for a few minutes. So that's what I'd like to do right now. So I'd like you to kind of, we're going to take the next, let's say, 10 minutes. We'll take the next 10 minutes and have a little practice with the Jesus prayer that I will lead you in. The Jesus prayer is calling upon Christ to invite him into your heart. It is a prayer to Jesus with awareness centered in our heart. What I'd like you to do right now as I lead us all through this practice is to sit comfortably. If you want, you can close your eyes. And I'd like you to be present. Feel where you are right now. Feel your body's contact with the floor, with the back of your chair. Let your feet rest on the floor. Imagine that they have roots going deep into the ground. Now follow your breathing in through your nose all the way to your lungs. Feel how your chest expands when you breathe in and how it sinks when you exhale. For in God we live and breathe and have our breath being. You breathe in the breath of God. Christ's presence and the Spirit fills you and gives life to your inner being. And you exhale the waste. Rest in your breathing, breathing in and out. Focus your awareness on the area of your heart. Now that we are aware of our breathing, pray the Jesus prayer like this. Inhaling, pray, Lord Jesus Christ. 
exhaling, pray, have mercy on me. Inhaling, you pray, Lord Jesus Christ. Exhaling, you pray, have mercy on me. Inhaling, you receive all that Jesus Christ wants to give you. Exhaling, you get rid of unrest and whatever disturbs your peace. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. As you breathe out, let go of everything that weighs you down. The old preconceptions of how you are, how others are, how God is. When you breathe in, receive peace, joy, and love from Jesus. With every breath out, your heart and your mind is cleansed more and more. And with every breath in, Christ lives more and more in your heart and your mind. Don't exert yourself. Breathe normally. Just repeat the prayer. And let the prayer repeat itself with your breath. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. I receive, I let go. Now continue the prayer on your own for a few minutes until I bring us to a close.
Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me.